worker. What is up, Mappers, and welcome out to practice. Day one, Lake of the Ozarks here for the eighth stop of the Bassmaster EQs. You guys saw Watts Bar, kind of sucked it up out there. Didn't get the job done. Now we have two events left. I think I slipped, uh, they were projecting like 18th in points or something. So I'm not even gonna look at it because all I know at this point is uh, I have to try to win these next two events here at Lake of the Ozarks and Harris Chains. Many of you know, if you're MFers for a very long period of time, Lake of the Ozarks is a special place to me. It's one of the very first places that I filmed videos that I brought to you guys. What is up, Melican Fishing family? We are heading down to the one and only Lake of the Ozarks. Got all my stuff ready to go. Got my sleeping bag so we can sleep in the Tahoe suites. Kyle wants a dadgum hog snatcher to there it is. Straight up. Zark got his nickname here when he uh, went off a rope swing. <laughs> <laughs> you are the f***ing Zark. You're the man, the Zark. The Zark. <laughs> Which made him an Ozark wizard when he was christened in the 35 degree water on New Year's Day, 2000 and something, like eight years ago. And, uh, yeah, this is the only lake on the EQ schedule that I have been to before. The problem is I haven't been here in the fall. I've only been here in the winter and the spring and uh, once in like June. And so totally different this time around. Generally, this is a lake that patterns extremely well, as are all the Ozark lakes. But this time of year, it, uh, it, it only goes down in a very specific area, a few areas of the lake. And so that's what we're going to try to break down in practice. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of dock fishing. Uh, I'm going to be doing some topwater fishing and I'm definitely going to have the glide baits out as well since this is a tournament that uh, once again we have to top 10. I'm going to try to win it though because uh, we need all the points we can get here going into the very end of the season to try to get that top 9 spot or top 10 spot if Kenta Kimura keeps kicking ass uh, to make the Elite Series. But this is going to be a fun time. We're going to be a lot we're gonna have a lot more fun, catch a lot more fish and a lot bigger fish than that shithole Watts bar we just came from. And um, who knows, maybe we'll even get to launch with a launch ramp and not hit a buoy on the way over in the dark because they have facilities in this place. Okay, let's catch some! Dude, this is my favorite part of the lake. So pumped. back and got it. Keeper. Smaller keeper. He looks like a Watson keeper. <sighs> Nothing crazy. Just kind of seeing how far the bait is back in these creeks. We're almost to the back of it. Right now, a bunch of white bass back here. White bass and I'm sure there's hybrids. At least it's not 90% catfish like Watson. Damn. That's a better one. That's a show enough a stud. That's actually, that is a huge one this time of year here. I think that that would be big bass yesterday. Just pitched over to a little fucking tree and I just... 
didn't even see him. It's a, a big one. These fish are so much stronger and healthier than anything we've fished for lately. back lake of the ozarks we need these this is what we need in this tournament one of these along with four three pounders and we'll win it's badass This looks so good. I don't even want to throw this right here. Look how cool it looks with the it says, but black sparkly head under. and the black sparkly trailer. Alright, come and play. So it's a loud bitch. Probably right. a little too loud for. didn't have one on it probably did i think that was a fish i don't know what i would have just snagged on the fall Back him. did i catch two keepers before that besides that big one two little keepers maybe and i think one keeper plus the big one so far. Used to be a seven inch worm. God, it's gonna be so big to get that bite. Oh my God, freaking flew up to it and hit the brakes. Right off this damn stump. Or a rock or something. God, but these jokers are getting fed doing that. All these gizzards can swimming around. Sitting there waiting. That's clean water too. Johnny Moore ass tarp. Joker freaking slurped it off there. Small Joker. Keeper. And that one too. Hey, catfish bud. Carp bud. Where's the big dong? Right there. It worked! That's not a 15 inch fish, but I don't know what the limit is. Either way, not gonna do it for us. But, kind of figuring out these fish are in the backs of some of these smaller cuts on the docks. This is a real small cut. Really, really flat back here, but I got a feeling the bass haven't started their migration where they really get back here. So the first stop they'll go is into some of the shorter pockets that have flat backs. And this is one of those. That was terrible. Oh, 
<laughs> you see my line? <laughs> Little guys in there. Little pecs. That's not a bad one. You're in the last one. Keeper. Keeper, keeper. Two pounder, a little less. Once again, not what we're looking for, but Get some big ones moving here right behind them, that'd be good. Got it, bud? Take that one to the scale. Maybe, hopefully not. Pitching a little jig around, catching some fish. But I'm flipping it on this Zark rod, the 7.4 heavy MF rod. And this is probably my favorite dock pitching rod because it's shorter than my usual 7.7 heavy flipping stick that I use my MF -er series for a lot of my open brush flipping where I don't need to skip up under stuff as much. And uh, it's nice because it loads up really well. It's almost like a, it's got enough tip that you can sling it under there, but it kind of loads throughout the rod. So you can just, you'll see me a lot. I don't, don't snap set them on a slack line a lot. It's more of a, a lean a lot of times. And this rod loading up like that really lets you. And it's just, it's a great skipping rod. Even Zark can skip with it. That's how good of a skipping rod it is. That's saying something. One of these fish are loaded up right here. Zapping bugs all day. Big old gizzards rolling around. I put the glide in my hand a little more. I don't really know if there's been too many baggins that have seen my jig and not bit it. Dude, we should have just put it in here. Oh my God, that son of a bitch was taking it. They are bitey. Yeah, trying to screw me up, brother. I looked away and the rod about it was gone. It was like at my fingertips. Dude, should I flip my jig in there? <laughs> Go! Give me that freaking hover cricket. I'm gonna freaking hover this little bastard. Brush pile fisher. Seem to be the way to go so far. I freaking strolled that up to him. He was three feet below the surface. Here it comes. Yeah, I think it's a pass actually. It's giant. I can't believe it actually bit. It might be a drum or a catfish. I mean, don't even know he's hooked yet. It's huge if it's a bass. It's taking me out to sea. I don't think it is. It's one of them buffalo. I had to cast to it. Hands to. It's not a bass. I don't know, he went right to it and sucked it up. I think it's a catfish or a drum. What do we got? Flippity flop. It's a cat. Big old blue cat lounge. It might be a channel. It's... Is that a blue or a channel? I don't know what it is, but it's got jizz on my line. Line chism. Come here, bud. No, don't spin. How do you hold them? By their mouth? Those blues will crush your fingers, I know that. Ow. 
like that. That's a big ass, 10 plus. I had to throw at it. I knew it was highly unlikely it was a bass, but just gotta get those 10 pounders dialed in, no matter the species, right? Wow. That ain't a damn catfish. I'm not freaking letting this some bitch jump again and boat flip him and wiggle my cricket around. I'm gonna do it on my own. If I want to tangle, it's gonna be my own fault, not yours, bud. Why do you feel big? Spinner tackle. He's long. He's not big, but he's long. The longer they are, the harder they can fight. Look at my line. <laughs> Did you see my line? No. It was swimming. Taking it from his bud, there was two big ones in there. This was not one of them. Yahtzee. Now where's that dog? Why you fight like you big? Got caught before. Now we got caught after. He's got it. Better one. Old ugly. Old ugly. Get that one. Could you see him? Feel it in your plums? Mm hmm. Don't say that too loud. Get DQ'd. Just want to see what he was. He's a weird guy. Dude, you hear weird. 0 0.2. 0 0.2 pounds. 2.5. Mm hmm. Thick boy. Oh, are you sad? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> now we nerves were her. Spins. No more Kim. In the movie, Cole. Indiana Jones. Bingo. Tongue hooked him. He probably die. Two and a half. A cricket, no. Look at you all incognito. <laughs> Dude, I borrowed my buddies. I won try. <laughs> I was like, dude, what? that's fucking badass. Dude, this thing is like baked up. Yeah, like, it's like for mine. Real. But I love it. <laughs>
Yeah. I mean, I really do. This thing's badass. Oh, I love this. Did you stuff. get you sell your boat already? Hmm. You sell your I just boat? take it back to the guy I get it from. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. It's badass. Catch any? I've caught a few, but not like I ain't caught nothing over three. Yeah. But I caught some two. I caught well, I caught one probably three. Well, that's not bad. No, no. I caught a big one this morning, but then I've caught just a quote of two pounders. Yeah. Low and a medium. I yeah. appreciate it. You bet no. Morning MFers from beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. It is a beautiful morning out here. Second day of practice. Um, yesterday didn't really give a recap, but um, ran up to the Gravoy area of the lake and then fished some more main lake stuff around there too. That is the cleanest water from there to the dam in the lake. Um, some of what I fished in the back of creeks was, you know, only two to three foot visibility, but we saw up to seven, eight foot visibility too. Um, started the morning off with a big one, damn near six pounder, and then caught a bunch of other keepers as well. But that was kind of the, the, the theme of the day. Caught a ton of one and a half to two and a half pound fish. And just doing research, you know, talking to my buddy John Soakup, who is extremely analytical about how much weight it's taken in the past to get a check, top 10, and win these tournaments. It's going to take somewhere in the, the 17 pound range, it, it seems like, to win this event. Yesterday, I think we probably had in the 15 pound range um, with those smaller fish and then that one big one. And the one big one wasn't something I can just go duplicate. It was just kind of a random fish. So we're going to try to find some more uh, average quality, some three to four pounders today. Kind of get in between the, that range. And to do that, I ran up to the dirty water um, up the river. So we're gonna be fishing up the river probably a 20 to 25 mile section anything that looks good head down flipping docks Wind is supposed to blow a lot more today. It's supposed to be sunny and hot and I'm going to also be mixing in the glide a lot more too today glide swim jig uh, movement on the wind blown side of some of these docks and uh, Of course, we'll keep the top water honest as well But just like yesterday gonna be a fun day. No scoping really just head down skipping docks Hopefully we can make some magic happen and find something good. Top water fish, the deal. Maybe a keeper. <laughs> Something.
all small ones today so far. Not seeing anything that makes me want to come up here. catch a fish it's impossible not to have a tournament boat driving up to where you're at <laughs> it's incredible 100% chance that happens three pounder I'd show it to you guys but there's a sweet Got it as it hit the water. The good <laughs> Veronica Lewinsky, good and too. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> that was badass. Look how big that one is. So fat. Short and healthy. And. Anyways, three seven. Five of those would go a long way. Thick boy, pooping. <laughs> Right under the small keeper. Well, guys, as you've noticed, and maybe it's something you haven't noticed, I have been changing baits quite a bit to dial in what exactly they want today and let me give you guys a rundown quick of how i'm approaching these docks and just dock fishing in general so i've caught the last several sorry about the creaky dock back behind me but i've caught the last several on this texas rigged six cents prawn and one thing that um, is important to note about that is i'm using a tiny tiny weight you guys see how small that is I think it's an eighth, but it might even be a 16th ounce weight. Got it pegged with a little peg stopper there. And the reason for that is it's cloudy outside this afternoon and I'm fishing really, really, really shallow docks a lot of the times. And so this bait is actually just like gliding around, barely hanging up there. And that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. I have all different types of baits for dock flipping up here on the deck and I like to mix it up just to kind of see what the fish like. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes they just want one and I can't figure out why, but today it makes total sense to me because when I'm fishing these shallow docks and I'm fishing really muddy water, the way I like to think of it is your, your strike zone vertically shrinks, but horizontally it's much greater. And so what I mean by that is if I pull up to a dock that some of these literally have a foot of water underneath them, there's all different areas of the dock the fish can be on. It's not something as simple as like, there's a float on the back side of the dock or it's where the walkway connects or it's where there's one or two isolated um, little black floats. No, the entire thing is, 
essentially the exact same. And so you wanna make as many flips and keep your bait in the strike zone um, as much as possible. And the way to do that is by having a bait that's gonna glide around and hang in that horizontal strike zone. So up and down, I mean, if a fish is right over here and I drop a bait right here in this muddy shallow water, he's probably not even gonna know it's there. But if I make, that's why I wanna make like 10 flips down the side of the dock, boom, 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 boom. Let the bait glide down real slow, hits the bottom, pop it once, reel it in, flip again. Now, if you're fishing a little bit deeper dock, that's when I've thrown this guy a whole bunch, just a little finesse jig. And the reason for that is, you know, it's, it's a finesse jig and it's a real natural color. I want this bait, it's heavier, it's a half ounce. I want this bait to go to the most juice part of the dock, whether that be uh, a walkway float where the walkway connects to the dock, the back corner of the dock. Um, or if I see a brush pile on the bottom, way up underneath a, a, a swim platform or something like that, I want this bait down on the bottom soaking because those fish are in more particular parts of the dock. Now the same logic goes for the cloudiness. The sun's popping out of course a little bit now that I talk about it being cloudy today. But this afternoon it's gotten cloudy and the fish have really sucked up underneath those floats. Of course they'll do that when it's sunny too, but they're they're not really on specific isolated parts of the dock. And as you guys saw in the last good one that I caught there, that fish probably would have eaten a glide, would have eaten maybe a top water. It was sitting right up underneath there and uh, actually uh, came out of the water and got my prawn. So again, I'm going to flip around with this guy. Of course, I'm gonna miss, mix the finesse jig in. I've got a creature bait too. I'm not giving up on that, but that's what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Right now I'm way up a river and I'm fishing the points where the points come out and make sand um, real sandy bottom that's really silted in over time and that's uh, giving these fish a little bit more of an isolated spot to sit on as opposed to the other 72 million rain docks so I don't know we're gonna keep poking around and uh, see if it's gonna be worth making the run up here I think it's only probably a half hour from launch right here so very doable to come up here at noon uh, if we have a long day, come up here at one or two o'clock and still have a couple hours to fish. So we're gonna need to find more though to come up here. Thank you. prawn fish. Solid one, not real big though. Two and a quarter.
messed up, but we found something. I've done a terrible job talking to the camera today, guys. But I finally found something up this river. Just running stuff that looks good. Go figure. But I'm hitting everything that's either... I'm running everything that's either the first major uh, deep dock right when you come into a creek or any main lake or point isolated dock that's got wind blown on it and they are stacked on the, cur the floats. I don't know if it's because it's windy today, cloudy today, or both, but the last I don't know, hour and a half. I've probably had eight to 10 bites on anything that looks good. That was the first one I put in the boat, but I probably caught, I don't know. I've had 20 plus pounds worth of bites though. So things could be developing quickly. I just get here early so everyone can see that I was here tying on baits. Good morning, I'm after last morning of practice out here, fifth day that is, and I'm freaking pumped for this one, man. We just launched at the takeoff area by where we're going out tomorrow, and it is a beautiful morning out here. Really, the plan today is to find some safe fish around launch, and really, um, it's not a secret around here that like probably 75 to 90 percent of the fish in the entire lake of the ozarks live within like three miles of this spot right here because this is where they're all released so 
always fish in this area, but there's gonna be a ton of boats in here, ton of pressurey. Pressure? I saw a fish hatchery on there, and so I said pressurey as I said that. Anyways, we found something really special yesterday. I didn't talk about it much, but up the river and the water that was like really stained, like a foot of visibility, maybe less, we found something um, on the big bait that was truly special. Had like 25 bites in a couple hours doing it, and all of them were the caliber it's gonna take to win this event. I was telling Cole and Becky and a couple of my buddies, like I got two or three, three plus pound bites the first three and a half days of practice. And in two hours, I probably had 25, three to six pound bites up there doing that. So not something you can 100% bank on because that big bait bite is so fickle. Um, I've seen it time and time again. I could go up there and get 25 bites and catch zero of them, or I could get no bites doing it. but. Honestly, I don't have a whole lot else found. Um, a couple safe brush pile fish, some shallow dock fish, but nothing that's reliable for big ones. And so I'm gonna risk it no matter what going up there um, to see if that bite pans out. But like I said, we're about to blast here in a second for the next six hours until one o'clock. And then uh, we got the meeting and registration, everything. Hopefully find some, uh, some safe ones here. Let's get it. Did he get me snagged? All right. Pass one? Yeah, I thought I took the rod out of my hand. Oh, yeah. A little off shaking. Change my worm. We're going mid spear to catch nothing. I mean, a daggum haul. Take them off. <laughs> okay. There you go. Good job. Yep. Oh! He was on the littlest and nothing brush pile. Probably a keeper. Not a keeper. Maybe a keeper. Not a keeper. Maybe a keeper. I don't know if it's a 14 or 15. I don't really care. Will he watch a lot? Released fish. That's what you're looking for when you fish areas that are by released areas. See how that fish looks? Pink, beat up. Been in a live well or a Way tank, whatever, little 15 and a half inch, 2.2 pound keeper. Yep. Okay, that's a wrap on practice MFers. And for most of this practice, I was starting to feel a little bit worried. Everything I thought would be going on with the dock flipping stuff, with the bait ball stuff, the shad movement and everything, was just not quite there yet. And I don't see any signs of it really getting there. The fish are kind of all over the place. It's gonna be crazy. Um, some giant fish are in this much water, some are in 30 feet of water. They just haven't made the full fall transition yet. But we found a special area probably a 10 mile stretch of the river where the water's too dirty 
to catch them on a big bait generally. I and mean, that's about the only thing that they want up there. I think that it's a popular area, this river, that um, people fish a lot, but they flip a lot of jigs, a lot of brush hogs, stuff like that. Maybe they'll throw a spinnerbait or some a jig, but as far as a moving bait goes, that chopper bone colored glide, the bone color was absolutely huge. Zigzagging in and out. Strike zone's very, very small with the water that's staying. So you have to put it right against the side of the dock floats. Isolated docks, docks that are on points, first docks going into a creek, places where those fish can set up and just have the best opportunity. If there's all a row of docks, ding, 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 set up in a cove, ding, 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 ding on the way out, all that bait that's on its way into those creeks, they're going to stop right there at the front of that dock. A little bit of wind blowing in there, man gets me excited thinking about it because I had a lot of bites in a short amount of time. So not sure if I got a co-angler yet. We're going to be getting that text here from Bass pretty soon, but I cannot freaking wait to get after them. I don't have a whole lot else, but um, I do have some brush pile fish. We're going to start on those in the morning, try to get some easy ones out of the way in the live well, make me feel a little bit better in my heart and soul before we go throw the big bait stuff. Because like I was telling Cole, we might get 25 bites in the big bait and catch zero of them. We might get 25 bites and catch 24 of them. We might get three bites and catch all three of them. We do not know with the big bait stuff and we're gonna have to stay a little bit vigilant, move around. But one thing I do know is we have the opportunity to be around the fish to win this tournament. And so I feel like I'm pretty much competing against the fish at this point. And that's the way you want to feel after practice. You have something to yourself, you're gonna go execute and uh, we're gonna freaking execute. It's the only option we have. We got two tournaments left. We got to get up there in points and we got to kick some ass in this one. So I cannot wait. And my first things for watching though. I'll catch you soon for a badass tournament video. I hope. Out here. Peace.